Good evening. This is Dr. Thomas, and we're at week seven in Social Work 505. And week seven is around working in groups. And this is the overview for this week. So this week's unit covers groups, endings, and transitions. We will explore the stages of the group process and the role of the clinician in leading the group in various stages. You will read about group formation and contracting in groups. Additionally, you will be discussing endings and terminations and the challenges and fears that impact the helping relationships as you move through the final stages. You will learn about the role of the clinician in the termination process and the importance of closure to promote continuation of the change process. First, you will see an overview video on group intervention endings and transitions, and then our learning objectives. So upon your successful completion of this module, you will be able to demonstrate understanding of assessment, intervention, and evaluation with small group client systems. Demonstrate understanding of assessment, intervention, and evaluation with organizational client systems, and demonstrate understanding of various ways to evaluate practice effectively. Our learning resources are as follows. There are several readings out of the Schulman text. So the readings this week are Chapter 6, Endings and Transitions, Chapter 9, Group Formation, Chapter 10, Group as Mutual Aid System, and Chapter 14, Endings and Transitions with Groups. There is also a reading by Walsh called Endings in Clinical Practice, Client Reactions to Endings. There is a video this week, so please review the Carla Washburn case. It's about 23 minutes, and it's needed for one of your discussion posts for the week. There is a reminder, and the reminder is to, if you have strong artifacts from this class, to upload them to your e-portfolio. E Check in the syllabus to see the list of artifacts and the competencies and related behaviors they meet. When you upload your artifacts, please make sure to include the course number and assignment name in the artifacts file name and refer to frequently asked questions to get more information on the uploading of artifacts to your e-portfolio. Next, we look at the discussion post for this week. So the first is to, again, make sure you review the Carla Wash burn case video, and then think about a potential group that you could run that would benefit the client you chose for your initial assessment video and paper, and then describe the following. What type of group is this? What's the focus of the group? What's the group's purpose? Why did you choose this particular group for your client, and how will this group help your client? What types of issues might you run into with planning, conducting, and ending this group? And how might these issues impact your client? For this discussion, you will not see the post of other students until you have posted initially to this discussion and then react to at least one of your classmates' posts. The next discussion post requires you to go back to the Widener share, Social Work Shared Case of Anita. Describe how you can help clients process their fears and challenges successfully in the helping relationship. During this termination process, how could you help this family plan for continued services and supports? And again, you will not see any other post until you have put in your post and you are respond, responding to at least one other classmate. So the initial post is due by Thursday and the follow-up by Sunday. 
Again, this is week seven, so please try not to be late with your assignments this week because the window for grading is very, very short. So after Sunday, it is by Tuesday at the latest, I would plan to have my grades in. In terms of a short PowerPoint on groups, let's go to the beginning. Again, this is not all encompassing on the multitude of information you have to have in order to run effective groups. We know that in many agencies, there is a push towards group work versus individual work because group work, quite, quite frankly, is much cheaper. But if you don't have experience running groups, you should not run groups until you have such experience, either by working with another uh, team leader, observing groups, or whatever would give you that experience. So the reading talks about groups as a mutual aid system. The group leader is needed to help group members create the conditions for mutual aid to take place. So it's not just people being in a group, but a skilled group leader that is leading each of the group members to reach their goals and objectives. Group members share relevant data. Mutual support getting is achieved through difficult subjects. Group members hold each other accountable and each member contributes to a pool of knowledge. So that's part of the mutual aid system. Group members model behavior, groups instill hope in members, and group members encourage each other to take responsibility for their actions. There are some disadvantages of groups, and, and one is less personal attention. The therapeutic alliance may not be as strong when you have a number of group members and one group leader. Sometimes all members don't participate, and then confidentiality is lessened because of being in a group. Often you'll hear these phrases used over and over again to describe groups. And these stages are as follows. The forming stage is when group members get to know one, one another, the task and the expectations. Storming, when you get people together, there's also often conflict, disagreement, or criticism. But this is seen as a normal part of working in groups. And when groups can get through this phase, then they actually are at the point of doing the work. So then we come to the norming phase. Group members have worked together. They've gotten through that storming phase. And now they're communicating better and becoming more positive and productive. And then we move to performing. The group begins to achieve its goals. However, if problems arise, the group may go back to earlier stages and need to work through them. The reading mentions diversity in group work that we need to pay particular attention to, uh, attention to. So leaders must pay particular attention in diverse groups. The reading talked about splitting in terms of just race, but it could be based on race or gender or class or a number of different issues. Also talk, talked about tipping points where there's a feeling of anxiety created between the majority and the minority group members promoting aggression by the majority. And then when we talk specifically about race, we talk about white flight. When whites find themselves in a group outnumbered, they may leave. In terms of structure, groups vary in size. Educational groups can be larger. Therapeutic groups, usually around six to 10, eight being ideal and manageable. If, if they are larger, then we need more than one group leader. There are closed versus open groups. A closed group, when the group begins, the members that are in that group or all that can join. An open group means people can join at any time, so the group membership can be fluid. 
Groups should establish their group rules, including attendance, how they interact with each other, expectations regarding participation, and then can they talk to each other outside of group, or is this something that is prohibited? And if they do talk outside of group, is the expectation that they will share that information in the group. Potential members should be interviewed prior to them joining a group to determine their ability to participate in the group versus perhaps individual therapy would be best for them. So, ending process. The positives about ending. People can experience pride in their accomplishments and it increases their sense of competence. They demonstrate new capacity for other attachments and now can take the learning from the group setting, which is a somewhat artificial setting, and apply it to real world settings. The ending process can also be difficult and can result in denial, anger, mourning, the loss of ending the group. It could be a request for additional help now that the group is ending, aggressiveness, missing sessions, or e e even stop coming to the group. And then if the group is going to continue but have new leaders, then there could be hostility towards those new leaders. And this is the ref are the references that were used to create this PowerPoint. So again, if you have questions for the week, I encourage you to send those emails to me as quickly as possible to get your assignments in as soon as possible. And I look forward to reading your posts for the week and hope you have a wonderful week.